Did you know you could use ChatGPT to help you improve your renderings? So check this out. I recently had somebody reach out to me saying they have this rendering. They want it to look more like this. What are the steps needed to do that? So I took their rendering and made it look like this with ChatGPT. Pretty crazy, the results, because everything ChatGPT is showing is what I would have told this person in text as to what they should have been doing. But the problem is when I'm writing feedback, I'm realizing that I have the end result in my head, but somebody who's new to this might not have that. So this is how the workflow works. In ChatGPT, I'm using model 4.0, okay? Not 03 or 04. I uploaded the student's rendering and I asked ChatGPT to basically look at this reference image that they were targeting and give them feedback as well as generate an image. So here you can see it's picking up on the lighting. So basically the distinction of how soft or sharp the lighting is between the base render. So the current render and the reference render, which is pretty cool. And then it's even saying in D5 how to do that. And so one of the reasons this is happening is I put a lot of my D5 content through ChatGPT, and because it has a permanent memory, it's learned all this. So I use it a lot to help generate, you know, notes, companion documents, all this like guides. And so now it kind of knows how to use D5, which is kind of crazy. So all the stuff it's talking about are things that I've written before, now committed to memory, placed into feedback. Pretty crazy there, but it's doing everything correctly, right? So these are the tips. We're talking about fixing the lighting, fixing the materials, the camera composition, the post-processing, and the vegetation and foreground, which is literally what I would have written anyways. And again, I think a lot of that happens because of it reading my notes and everything. But, you know, as we could see by the base image here, it's not a bad rendering. It's just, it could use a little bit more improvement. And so the ability to just show the end result to somebody without them having to read an essay is actually really important because think of it this way. If you really know what you're doing and you see something wrong, you can kind of envision it in your head, what you need to do, what the final should look like. I think students, you know, especially starting out, they're still in school, you know, they're not going to school for this. This is just like something they learn in architecture school, um, you know, not professionally. And they just don't know what it should look like. So to be able to have that reference image in front of you, and that's like your roadmap, I think this is really useful for newcomers. So let's just go through the notes some more. So we're talking about, you know, the materials feel too clean and flat. We talk about this all the time. You need to add, you know, normal maps. You need to add weathering. You need to add detail, round corner, all that. And it's picking up on the subtle imperfections, surface detail. You know, then it's talking about the composition, which, you know, we're dealing with two different compositions here. We've got this, you know, kind of far out shot, and then we've got this super tight zoomed in shot. Um, and it's able to understand how the current render is different from the reference. And it's literally saying what focal length in millimeters you should use. You literally go into D5, you plug that in, and you'll get something similar. And like 50 to 85, like it's not wrong. So I hope you're getting what I'm saying here. Like this is, this is pretty crazy, especially if you're using ChatGPT a lot as a design tool, you know, like I am where I'm feeding it information. It's beginning to understand crazy. The biggest thing that it picked up on was the post-processing though, just the general color. So I'm just going to swap between the two. You know, here we've got a lot of pink. We've got some sharpest shadow, but a lot of the project is in focus in light, right? You know, there's some nice vignetting, but this is helping it stick out because of the bright light. This, because the light's kind of all over the place, there's a lot of shade on the building. The shade on the building is actually hiding it. So it doesn't stick out. My eye, funnily enough, kind of goes here. And this is like nothing. So I think just having that reference photo and the output photo can just tell you like, this is what it should look like. Go there. Um, and I think that's, that's great because, you know, if you're pulling an all nighter, you're a student, right? You're getting ready for your final crit. You're not going to have someone like me over your shoulder saying like, Hey, you should fix this. Plug into ChatGPT. This is crazy. So then the vegetation and foreground, 
I thought it was great that it actually like framed the rendering properly with like trees on both sides. Very crazy. So anyways, we go down here um, and this was the initial version that came out, right? So again, like big difference from the base rendering, right? So I know the form changed. That's, that's the reality of AI. Structure preservation is like one of the biggest issues and I think it'll get fixed at some point, but the point is you see this and you can, you know, you can fill in the gap. So we need to be humans. We can't just like turn our brains off when we're dealing with AI, like keep your brain on. Okay. That's, that's life advice. But you can see that this is the start of the right direction. And because this is a conversation, you see, I'm asking it to correct itself. So it should be pinker. It should be brighter, right? It should match the image. And I had some like weird bug here where I could already see that it was going to be super pink and I just auto corrected it by saying not that pink. I'm just having a conversation here and I'm pushing it to focus on that reference image because I don't, I don't know what it is, but sometimes they just don't listen. That's, that's the reality of it. But this is where we ended up. Okay. So just to go through this one more time, this was our starting point. We fed it a reference image and a very short prompt. I kept it really short and we got this. This is crazy. Like if my college renderings looked like this, I'd be very happy. But just look at this. We've got like the weathering. We've got the shadow corrected, the post-processing, like the same blue color and pink tones. Like everything is here that we wanted. So this is literally just almost like a shortcut. So instead of someone explaining step by step and people not reading it and ignoring it, they're just showing you, you know, show, don't tell. I think, I think it's really important. I, I really think this might be a useful workflow for people that need, need an extra hand. You know, I'm always around. You can always message me. You can join the Academy. I can mark things up. That doesn't go away, but I think there are situations where, you know, you just need some quick feedback, you know, cause I, I remember back in school, you'd show someone, you know, friends or family, some renderings and they're like, oh yeah, cool render bro. And like, that's it. Like you don't really get anything. And I think being able to pitch this to somebody, you know, being chat GPT and then just not being a yes man, it's actually really, really useful. It's kind of like a kind of refreshing and yes, you know, AI does want to please you and everything. But if you tell it, Hey, be, be brutally honest with me, it will do that. Like that's, that's kind of fun. You should roast yourself at some point, but anyways, I digress. I think this is an awesome workflow. If you've been using this, love to hear your experience on it. I think it's super useful. So tell me about it in the comments. Really, really interested in hearing what you have to say about this. Cause this just like it came to me one day and I was like, I think this could like completely revolutionize how people work like in a, in a solo environment. Um, cause I, I feel like a lot of people just don't understand ArcViz and you need to be surrounded by people that do in order to get valid feedback. Having this just at your fingertips, this, this is pretty big. And another thing I was thinking is like, you know, and I'm sure some people will say this, oh, well, you know, couldn't they just like style transfer and everything into a D5, you know, grab this and drop it on the render. And it's like, that only brings it so far. Like that's only one part. That's only the post-process part. So like I thought of that and like we did try that and that's actually how this lighting came to be, but just not, not enough sometimes. There's, there's a lot more you have to do to an image. Anyways, hope you guys like this one as always. If you have a question or even feedback, put in the comments, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time.